Hello and welcome to this video. I'm Marcus Hayes and today is just another work day for me, but I do need to go to my favorite tire shop because one of the front tires on Maud, my Mordor Mark II Escort is close to the legal limit. So I thought I'd take you with me. So here is the tire in question pretty close to the legal limit. I mentioned in the last video that we had someone around to look at the roof on Maud's garage. Just show you that. Now the product they've used is Chromapole and basically they came around and they've put a bit in each of the cracks and then just put a, a coat over the whole roof. And they said that if it does leak within the next year, they'll come back and top it up. So yeah, it was quite an inexpensive repair as well. The company that done that for us is called JP Roofing and I'll leave a link in the description. Just spotted what I think is an RS Turbo Fiesta in the work car park. I've never seen this here before. If any of you who watch the videos know who this belongs to, definitely get them to get in touch with me via social media. Now I'm not at the tire shop, I'm at my work car park and I've got the car jacked up and I'm taking the wheel off. Must. Now I'm not at the tire shop, I'm in my work car park. Instead of driving more to the tire shop and then having to wait in the queue to have the tire done, my Scottish mate Jimmy is going to take the tire there, drop it off and then he'll be able to pick it up later. I'll give you the camera Jim. Right, let's get this wheel to the tire shop then. that there for you Paul? There's the old one. I'll just put the camera under the car. Oh Jim you left the camera on. I only got a little bit of battery left now. Right so that is Maud's new tyre on. I'm not sure what brand it is it's just a budget. Uh, Nexon? Never heard of them. Anyway, I don't know if Jim mentioned it, but this tire was fitted by my favorite tire shop, Southall Tires, and I'll leave a link to their website and their social media accounts in the description of this video. And I still got this worn out semi-slick to take drifting with me one day. Now I haven't quite finished my day yet, so I need to jump back in my red van. Same color as Jim's, but definitely not the same van because we're not allowed to use the van for personal trips. Huge thanks to Jim for taking the tire down for me. I really appreciate it. I'm probably going to continue this video at the weekend when I'm sure I'll be doing something car related. So I'll see you in a sec. Into the weekend and today is my 35th birthday. Happy birthday to me. I know I don't look a day over 20 and mentally I'm even younger. Right, got Esther in the air, always a slow and careful 
procedure with this car. Don't need to get her up too high, to be honest. The main thing I wanted to do today was just get under there and try and remind myself where I'm actually at with this car. Don't want to get too involved in anything today, seeing as it's my birthday, but as I was in the area, I thought I might as well come around here for a bit. Now, I had a bit of a coolant leak, and by looking from underneath, I was able to see that there was drips of coolant on the water rail here, where the two halves of it meet, and I was able to nip up the bottom Allen key bolt a bit more, so maybe that's cured that, we'll wait and see. Yeah, let's have a look underneath. Now, I thought I remembered that I'd put a gasket in between the diff and the axle, although I did remember that I hadn't put all the nuts in yet, and I was hoping that today I could put the rest of the nuts in, put some diff oil in it, and actually take the car down the road for a spin. Now, that would have been actually pretty cool because it's six years to the day that I blew up the Pinto in this car on the way to the rolling road on my 29th birthday. But yeah, I don't think I've got a gasket here. And as I say, I'm not getting involved in anything long like that today. So Esther's first drive with the ST lump, we'll have to wait. You can get a bit of a better look underneath the car from the rear end. It's really dirty. I wish I had some panel wipe here because I'd love to spend half hour cleaning it all up under here. But I have always kept a layer of wax on the paint ever since it was done. So I'm sure the dirt that is on there will wipe off quite easy when I get round to it. Now I've got a few bits that I need to tighten up underneath the front, just like the anti-roll bar bolts and stuff where it meets the track control arms over there. But I can do all that when it's on the ground. So yeah, I'm gonna get her back on the ground and tighten up what I need to and then put her away and go and enjoy the rest of my birthday. Now, I know I haven't achieved anything today on the Mark 1. I literally just got her out, had a look, and then put her away. But I think soon I'm going to set a day aside to come round here and degrease the whole of the underneath and give it a bit of a polish. And speaking of cleaning, I got a present today for my birthday from Kat, which is hopefully going to make it a lot easier for me to keep the Mark 1 looking in tip top condition. <laughs> Happy birthday to me. Kat has literally made me a homemade Nando's. Thanks, babe. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Cat has made me a chocolate cake. I'm so lucky, man. Look at that, man. Still got plenty of the chocolate left as well, which Cat reckons is called a ganache. Mm, banging. Now, as well as making me homemade Nando's and a homemade chocolate cake, Cat got me this for my birthday. It's a Works Hydro Shot. And it's basically a portable jet wash thing. Because at the garage where I have Esther, my Mark 1 Escort, and the garage where I store Maud, I don't have any electricity, so I can't use like a proper jet wash. In fact, at Maud's garage, I don't even have a tap. Um, and this thing, you don't even need to plumb it into a hose or anything if you don't want to. That's the battery, and then this is like the bottle thing, so I assume you put the snow foam stuff in there. Yeah, I think this attachment goes on here and then you can literally just put this in a bottle or a bucket or anything to draw the water up into it. And that twists on there, can't do it one-handed. Then this bit twists on the end of there and that controls the degrees of the fan. Yeah, this is the uh, hose that you put into a bucket and then this one I just showed you goes into a bottle. But yeah, you can just plumb a hose into it as well though. So yeah, with Esther being so mint, you know, it'll be handy to be able to use proper products to keep her looking mint. In particular, the snow foam, because I've heard that that actually lifts the dirt off of the paint and then it's safe to, you know, jet wash it off. I have always kept a couple of layers of wax on her, so I don't think I've done any damage to the paint, but yeah, moving forward, it'd be nice to wash her properly. Now, I don't actually have a charger for this yet, so I can't use it yet, that's on its way. But I also don't have any detailing products, so, if any of you out there have got any experience with 
different brands of detailing products. Let me know in the comments which ones are worth trying. Stuff that's idiot proof that you can't go wrong with, you know, easy to use. But yeah, I'm thinking of sort of maybe a pre-wash, a snow foam, maybe try a bit of clay bar, um, and then maybe something to seal it up, ceramic coating or something like that. But yeah, any suggestions, let me know in the comments. Now the government announced recently that in two days time, they're gonna be easing the restrictions a little bit more that have been in place due to the coronavirus. So it means that me and Kat, for instance, will be legally able to go and visit both of my parents at their place, as long as we stay out in the garden and keep a distance between ourselves. What that means is I'm gonna be able to get the history that my dad has got for the Mark III Escort. So I'll continue this video in a couple of days, but you'll only have to wait a couple of seconds. McDonald's is open. But the queue is all the way down the road. Hello, right, so a few days have passed and Kat is busy doing some decorating. And I've spent the afternoon chatting to some of you guys via social media. The other day, me and Kat went to visit my parents, which was a bit weird because we obviously have to keep our distance due to the coronavirus, but it was still good to see them for the first time in two months. While I was down there, I picked up the history that my dad has got for his Mark III Escort. Now, there's not a lot of history, to be honest. All that over there is to do with my dad's insurance policies that he's had on the car since he's owned it. But what I've got here is the last MOT that my dad put on it. And this is the MOT that we got with the car. So that would have been the last MOT that was done on the car by the previous owner. Now I made a couple of mistakes in the video where I first introduced the Mark III to you. So I wanna go over those now. First of all, I thought my dad had had the car for five years, but when I look in the logbook, He's actually had it since the 19th of April 2013, so just over seven years. The other mistake I made was with the mileage of the car. I thought it had done 30,036 miles. Now what it was, the pointer for the Speedo was covering the other three, and the last digit, the yellow digit, is actually the tenth of a mile counter. So the actual mileage of the car is 33,003.6 miles. Now, although I don't have a lot of history with the car, and for some reason my dad has only got the last MOT printout that he put on the car, but obviously nowadays the MOTs do show the previous four mileages anyway, and I've got this MOT, which would have been the last one that the previous owner put on it, and that would have been put on the car on the 14th of March 2012, and that would have expired obviously in March 2013, and then my dad put his first MOT on it on the 20th of April 2013. In March 2012, the car had done 25,366 miles, and then when my dad put an MOT on it a year later, it had done 25,452 miles, so it had literally done 100 or so miles in that last year that the previous owner owned the car. And then as you can see, my dad has taken it from 25,400 miles to 31,159 miles. That was when he done the MOT in 2017. And then after that MOT, the car had done about one and a half thousand miles before it actually got taken off the road in 2017. And I think at that time, I was actually daily in the car for a little while. So those last 1500 miles or so would have probably been all me. So yeah, we don't really have extensive history for the Mark III, but it's good to know that the very little history that we do have does sort of tally in with the mileage. And the fact that this MOT that my dad got, the mileage on the 2012 MOT here, matches the mileage that's on this MOT that we got with the car, that shows that this is not just a made up fake MOT. So not a lot to see really in terms of history for the Mark III, but loads of you have shown interest in maybe buying the car when I get it on eBay. So I thought I'd show you what I do have. And I'm glad I've cleared up those couple of mistakes that I made in the previous video. I'm not sure what I'm gonna be doing in terms of working on my cars next, but I'll definitely let you know in the next video. Before I go, I wanna send a massive thanks again out to Jimmy and Southall Tires for sorting out the tire for Maud. But other than that, I'm gonna end this video here. If you did think it was any good, please do give it a thumbs up and a share. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Click subscribe if you're new and you wanna keep up to date with all my future uploads. And check the links in the description to my social media and my email address. I'll leave the links to Southall Tires in the description as well. But other than that, until next time, thanks for watching.